Spoiler alert, I like the MK770. In fact, I like it a lot. Just when you thought Cooler Master was out of the peripheral game, they pull you back in with something unexpected. I'm Nick, and the MK770 is an interesting new keyboard from Cooler Master with hot swappable switches in a 95% form factor that will not break the bank. Could this be your first custom keyboard or just another deck to add to your collection? There's only one way to find out. The Cooler Master MK770 is a 95% layout wireless gasket mounted keyboard with hot swap switches. See Logitech, even Cooler Master can do hot swap switches. The version I have here is the Macaroon version. It does come in a, let's call it a less flamboyant version. It's the space gray color scheme. From first appearances, this Macaroon version is just not everyone's cup of tea, but honestly, I kind of love this color scheme. It matches my mouse pad, so you know, there is that. The design of the keyboard itself has a plastic shell. Usually this would be a problem for me based on my preference, but the more I used it, the less I cared about the shell. Here's the thing with the MK770. I plugged it in, I started using it, and I forgot that I was using it because it was just there. If you look at my gaming setup, for instance, I usually have two to three keyboards on rotation at once. And since plugging in the MK770, I didn't go back to my custom built Epo Maker TH100 or the Keychron Q1 Max that I have on my desk either. That's not to say I won't go back to those keyboards, but I'm saying that there are lots of things that I liked about the MK770. The weight of the MK770 compared to most keyboards I would typically go for is on the lighter side at just over one kilo or around 2.2 pounds. It's not the lightest keyboard, but definitely not the heaviest keyboard either. And if I'm being honest, it's in that sweet spot of weighted keyboards. The form factor again is a 95% layout. It's a bit weird in size, but overall compared to my usual 96%, I don't think you're really sacrificing anything in terms of functionality with the MK770. The spacing is great and the ergonomics feel pretty well thought out on the MK770. On the underside, there's also height adjustable feet. They're either completely folded away or they're on a low angle. There's also a more aggressive angle as well. The aggressive angle is always my preferred setting. I don't know what it is. I just like it when there's a bit more angle on my keyboard. While I'm talking about the feet, under one of them is a little 2.4 gigahertz wireless dongle and that's where you store it. It's got like a little cutout and it's a pretty clever place to hide it. The 2.4 gigahertz mode has a thousand hertz polling rate, but it will drop down to around 125 if you decide to use this in Bluetooth mode because it does have Bluetooth as well. Guys, use the 2.4 gigahertz mode if you're a sweaty gamer like me. Just, just use it or plug it in. Crazy. I haven't died yet, I'm on 15 kills, bro. Wow, that's crazy. The legend on each of the double shot PVT keycaps is nice and it's pretty easy to read and the keycaps themselves feel pretty grippy. I like grippy keycaps, guys. It's kind of my thing. The keycaps themselves aren't remarkable or special though. They're pretty pedestrian. I mean, other than the fact that they've got this pretty wild macaroon color set. On the top right hand side of the deck, there's a volume wheel with a tactile feel. You can also click the wheel in to mute your audio quickly as well but in the software, you can remap it to do other things. I'll come back to the software though. <laughs> the MK770 has per key RGB lighting, which can be configured on the keyboard without the requirement for software, which is good. And I'll come back to the software again, because uh, if I'm being honest, Cooler Master software for the past few years has been all over the place. On the rear side of the MK770, there's a single USB-C port for using in wired mode or to charge a keyboard. When you're using it in wireless mode, you can just plug it into charge as well. So there is that. There's also a three-way toggle next to the USB-C port for switching the modes. You can operate in that 2.4 gigahertz mode with the thousand hertz polling rate. You can use it in the wired mode or in Bluetooth mode. Speaking of Bluetooth though, 
You can pair the MK770 with up to three devices and you can quickly switch between them by pressing a key combination on the keyboard itself. As mentioned, the MK770 is a hot swappable keyboard which will allow you to use basically any three or five pin switch on this deck. The switch sockets are north facing which means the RGB light is at the top. The MK770 is a gasket mounted keyboard with silicon dampers that make it sound less like a rattling spray paint tin. What bra, they're after me bra if that makes sense. The included switches and stabilizers are also pre-lubed, so they're gonna be a bit quieter than usual. As far as the switches in the MK770, you've got a few factory options. You can go for a few different kale box switch variants. The version I'm using here are the red box switches. One thing I thought was interesting is in the box for this MK770, it included eight cherry green switches. I'm not sure why it has eight random cherry switches, but maybe it's to show that you can use other switches in it. Anyway, uh, let's have a listen to see what this thing sounds like. And it may tickle your pickle, maybe it won't. The MK770 is a nice keyboard to type on. As mentioned before, these keycaps are fine. They aren't remarkable, but the switches make them feel better than they probably are. I hope that makes sense. To be fair, I find myself making less mistakes when typing on these keycaps compared to the keycaps on my other two keyboards that I have on rotation. So there is that, I suppose. The MK770 uses Cooler Master's Master Plus software, which unfortunately is Windows only. Actually scratch that. Uh, I wouldn't want to subject macOS users to that at all. Okay, I'm not going to bang on about software too much here. I promised myself I wouldn't do this, but <sighs> the software like usual, uh, yeah, it's it's truly awful. Master Plus is the worst. Just know that Cooler Master is working on it. Well, at least they say they're working on it. I don't even want to install it on my PC to show you because it's that bad. I just... I don't want anything to do with it. As far as battery life, it's hard to say. When I pulled the MK770 out of the box, I didn't check the battery level. I'm gonna be honest with you. I played a lot of games with it and I've used it for about a week and the battery level indicator started to flash red at me after using it for about a week and then I promptly plugged it in, wanting to charge it without even thinking about reviewing it and I charged it overnight. So yeah, you know, it's still going. The internal battery is around 4,000 milliamp hours. So I'd say that compared to other wireless keyboards, depending on the brightness of your lighting, it should give you a reasonable amount of usage time before it needs to get charged. Other keyboards that we've checked out in the past have smaller batteries that last like weeks. So I'm sure that this one will probably give you around the same amount of usage. For gaming, I also found myself missing keystrokes less, which is a nice change. In Warzone, I've got this really odd habit of hitting caps lock, which locks the map on your screen. I found that I was doing that less than usual with this keyboard. The other weird thing is I also have my ping key set to the tilde key and on my Epo Maker TH100, I'll hit escape by mistake all the time. And that didn't happen a single time with the MK770. I've got, uh, yeah, they're pretty fat sausage fingers. So that's probably why I do that. Also tilde as a ping key in Warzone is dumb, but <laughs> it works for me, it gets the job done. Most people have it as middle click, but I use that to stab people, stab, stab, stab. If I had to criticize the MK770 anyway, I'd say that the biggest issue that I had with this thing is the fact that the case is plastic. Don't get me wrong though, using the MK770 feels really good. It feels like a great deck overall. I'm just used to much heavier keyboards. Most keyboards I have, I can't hold them like this because they're too heavy. Realistically, this is a non-issue unless there's a zombie apocalypse and you need a weapon. I do reckon though with the MK770, you would at least be able to dent a zombie skull if you hit hard enough, but you probably wouldn't be able to kill them completely. I don't know. Does that even matter? Is that even a factor? The thing that really makes the MK770 stand out to me is the fact that it's wireless and it's hot swappable. 
That's a huge thing for me. I didn't used to care, but now it's something that I care about. It's good to see a larger company like Cooler Master embrace something like hot swappable switches. It just means they listened or at least they copied what more boutique keyboard manufacturers are doing. Unlike Logitech who introduces something and then takes away that feature. Side note, while I'm picking on Logitech, the last keyboard I reviewed from Logitech was good except for the fact that it being not hot swappable and too expensive. I just want Logitech to know that they did something I didn't like and I'll take every single opportunity I can to make sure they listen and to make sure Logitech makes something good again because they've fallen off big time with their keyboards. Also, Cooler Master, fix your software. Don't take it personally, just fix it. It's really, really bad. I gotta say though, they don't need to fix the price though because if you're interested in picking up the Cooler Master MK770, it's going for around 100 US dollars or around 149 Aussie dollars at the time of filming. That's uh, incredibly good value for a keyboard like this. I think Cooler Master did a great job on the MK770. They nailed the layout. This 95% layout is really good. They nailed the build quality. It's really good. They nailed the features, but most of all, they nailed the price. Here's the thing. I know sweaty keyboard nerds will disagree with me because that's just the internet, but you're wrong. This keyboard is great and I like it. And I think you're gonna like it too, including those sweaty keyboard nerds. I think you'll find something that you will like about it. Let us know in the comments what you think about the Cooler Master MK770. I thoroughly enjoyed my time with this keyboard. Good work, Cooler Master. You did good. It's been a while, but you've done good. Now we've got some more keyboards on the docket. The next one's gonna be the Keychron Q1 Max and then the Newfie Gem 80. So make sure you subscribe to see those videos or watch one of these videos. I'm not sure which side we're gonna do it on. We'll do it here today, All right? Is that, is that, what? How does this, how do sides work? <laughs> Someone needs to teach me reverse dexterity because I don't have it. Pretty good headshots though.